looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And clearly, uh, the message came from the Hebrews, chapter 12, Therefore, we also, that word therefore means that there were preceding discussions or there are preceding notes, which you can very well look at in chapter 11, where we had the heroes of faith. He said, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin we so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our feet, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame I have sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I need to emphasize, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The beginning and end of our faith. That author can still worry the beginning. That finisher can still worry the end of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, the Alpha and Omega of our faith. I want you to note the author of the book of Hebrews is debated, more or less, is not known. But the audience, the audience is the believing Jews of the time. So the audience is or was well known. The word looking from the phrase looking unto Jesus is from a Greek word, aphorao. A Greek word, aphorao, A-P-H-O-R-O-A-O, which contextually means to look away from something so as to look or focus wholly on another. In other words, the writer of Hebrews was saying that his audience should look away from the cloud of witnesses, the ministers and ministry of Judaism, and look unto whom they all bore witness of which is Jesus. What he meant is that their faith should no more be in types and shadows of the Old Testament. In the blood of sacrificed animals, for the atonement, but it's now finished or accomplished in Christ. The New Testament covenant blood. In other words, forgetting, forgetting types and shadows and they break Christ as a reality. That was what he was telling them. If you take a, take a study of the book of Hebrews, he detailed all those types and shadows and how every reality came to be in Christ. From chapter one down to the end, it is a restudy. Now, this is instructive to every one of us here this morning. As I am reiterating that we should look away 
from any other thing and focus on Christ, the better covenant for so many reasons. As the author of Hebrew stated, I'm also saying it, that instructively, every one of us here this morning to look away from any other thing and look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus means focusing on Jesus in every aspect of your being and life. You will ask me why. Why I'm saying this to every one of us is that there are so many reasons. There are practically so many reasons. And one of the reasons I will tell you, God focuses on Christ. God the Father focuses on Christ. When you go to the Amplified Version of John 1, verses 1 to 3, I will read it. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, John 1, verses 1 to 3. A very popular scripture. He says, in the beginning, before all time, in the beginning, before all time, was the word, Christ. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. He was present originally with God. Now, know this. All things were made and came into existence through him, through that word. And without him, without that word, was not even one thing made that has come into being. Without that word, not one thing made that has come into being. I want us to think about that. Now, I told you that God focuses on Christ. Now, please, whatever I say, if I doubt, take time to research. Take time to ask God to teach you. Now, this thing that John described here is the beginning of beginnings. The beginning that has not even known any beginning. Now, there's a beginning also we talk about. And that's the beginning of creation. That beginning of creation is not the beginning because God had existed or has been existing at the finitum, even before the creation. But in that creation, God looked up to Christ when he said in Genesis 1 3, let there be light. He looked up to his son. I called him forth. I said, let there be light. That light is Christ. Please, let's not make any mistake about it. It is that light that he said, come in. Why? Because if you go to that Genesis, the beginning, let me go to it, sorry. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Something made it void. And you can get that again. And darkness was on the face of the deep. What was existing was darkness. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God was already there. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided light from the darkness. God called the light day, mark that day is the capital. And the darkness is called night. Now, let me tell you, that light is Christ. And Christ is the light that removed the darkness in the heart of men. Let there be light. The lamb was slain. 
The duty of that lamp slain was to restore light and give a boundary to darkness in the heart of man. Light for those who will dwell in him. Darkness outside for those who refuse to dwell in him. Now to let you know also that this light is different from the common light we know, the light of day and night. I want us to look at the same Genesis 14. The same Genesis chapter one verse 14. Then God said, let there be lies in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And let there be for signs and seasons and for days and years. That is the light we have that we say, ah, this is morning, the day has come. That is the one also that now makes it that you have the night. That one is a different one. The first one was Christ coming in to do what? To be slain for you and me. Coming in to do the work of creation. So I'm summarily telling you, my brethren, that God, the Father, focuses on his son Christ. Still from the same Amplified Version, Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then said the Lord to me, I'm reading from Amplified Version. Then said the Lord to me, that means the Lord to Jeremiah. You have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. I am alive and active, looking onto my word to perform it. The words spoken by the prophets were spoken by the Spirit of Christ. And God the Father is telling him, I said, I watch over that my word, that is Christ, to perform it. God the Father focuses on his son. Going further in First Timothy, verse 316, from Amplified Version again. First Timothy 3, verse 16. It says, and great and important and weighty, we confess is the hidden truth, the mystic secret of godliness. Many other versions will say the mysteries of godliness. And what is this mystery of godliness? He says, he, God, was made visible in human flesh. He, God, was made visible in human flesh. Christ came to be in human flesh. Justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit identified with him. And further declared him. In other words, Holy Spirit through focus, through light more about him. Was seen by angels. Angels came to have an understanding of God in Christ. When he came to the earth, they watched him. Preach among nations. Believed on in the world and taken up in glory, Christ. So, in all these, the mystery of godliness is all about Christ that all should focus on Him. That is God. My brethren, I'm moving further. As we look at First Peter, chapter 1, verses 18 to 21, please, I'm going to the Message Bible. I like how it was paraphrased. First Peter 1, verses 18 to 21. It says, you are alive, meaning you are own and my own. 
is a journey you must travel with a deep consciousness of God, a deep focus on God, a deep focus on Christ. In that sense, it costs God plenty to get you out of that dead end, empty headed life you grew up in. It cost God a great deal. And that went for they said, he paid with Christ's sacred blood, you know. He died like an what? Unblemished sacrificial lamb. And this was no afterthought. He said, and this was no afterthought. Christ was slain at the foundation of the world. Let there be light. It was not an afterthought. Even though it has only lately, at the end of the ages, become public knowledge. And that's why we say about 2,000 years ago, Christ died. That's why we say at the end, about our time became public knowledge. God always knew he was going to do this for you. It's because of this sacrificed Messiah, whom God then raised from the dead and glorified, that you trust God, that you have a future in God. That you have a great future in God. It is because of this Christ that so many things came to be that you and I have salvation. That you and I obtain what righteousness, the righteousness of God in Christ. That we ask God what sanctification, holiness. People think that holiness is by posturing. No, it's not. Holiness is something that we received in Christ. If you study the scriptures well about holiness, you find out that so many things in the Bible called holy that is not holy the way we think about it. Holy is simply about that you are separated unto something. So Christ made it possible that we are separated unto God. We became holy. It has nothing to do with posture. In fact, I was told that because of the raw concept of holiness we have come to acquire now, people speak in certain way so that you have the impression that they are holy. I heard that in those days, most people in deeper life would love to wear oversized coats and they carry their Bibles, holding it left hand and placing it on their chest because that is how Kubu carried his own. See, today, some people want to talk like Pastor Deboye because they think that is holiness. Holiness is that you are separated unto God and Christ made it possible. In the same Christ, we obtain redemption. The redemption is that he took us from that darkness I was telling you. Took us from that dominion of that darkness that resides in the minds of men. And brought us into the world, his own kingdom of light. That's the first redemption. Yet the second redemption we still come when we discard this mortal body to receive the immortality which he also had when he was raised from the dead. So we have a great future filled with promises by Christ when we, need, when we do what? Filled with promises by Christ which we need to look upon. When you focus on Christ and look upon Christ, revelations of who God is start descending into you and upon you. It does not come through any other way. The host of heaven looked at Christ as man in flesh. The father looked at him. The angels looked at him to observe him. And the man who chose who should follow him also proclaimed him. There's a great Christian philosopher they call John Lambert. He said, when you turn your eyes to Jesus, there is not room for anything else in your heart because 
because he fills it up. When, when you open the blinds of a pitch dark room, a pitch black room, the sunlight drives away darkness. This happens when we focus on Christ. Our mindset or our mindsets needs to receive the light that is Christ in different areas where darkness has held all down. When Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5, was saying, so he said, Our weapons or our warfare are not carnal. And I said, They are mighty in God in pulling down stronghold. Most of those things that that stronghold is that, that somewhere Satan is, there's an altar that is this, and that you put it down. No. The second line is we're casting down imagination. The stronghold is in our hearts, in our minds. It's Christ that throws light and removes the darkness. That's why you need to focus on him. Now, I remember in those days, just get, get give you a picture of how this thing is, you know, using a physical thing. In those days, when I travel and lodge in a hotel, after the day's work, you will return around maybe around eight or nine into the hotel room or whichever time. I have the habit of, before I sleep, I draw the curtains. And most hotels have these thick curtains on their windows. I will draw the curtains uh, of the light and sleep. When you draw the curtains, because it is night, everywhere is dark. But one thing you also notice is that at times, you sleep till eight or nine, but that time they have come. But while in that room, everywhere will still look dark. But eventually when you wake up, stand up, you know, in order to take a shower and prepare for the next, the work you do for the day, and go and draw the curtain, the way the light will come in into the darkness is amazing. That is how when you pray certain prayers, and focus on Christ to receive answer, when you throw that light, that's also how it comes. Now, let me tell you, the darkness can be strong in men. It can be strong in us. But it needs also the strength of Christ to uproot that darkness. I also... Talk about the road to Emmaus. It's a well-known scripture, which we read from Luke, I think chapter, Luke chapter four. Now, these two people were going to Emmaus. Now, they were unhappy. In fact, the one is called Cleopas. And then a companion. Some people say that uh, Cleopas' wife and that and that. But the Bible didn't mention who. So they were gloomy. Being disciples of Jesus, they couldn't understand what had transpired in the few days, last few days. The Messiah, the person they looked up that would deliver the Jews from the hands of the Romans, they said, I died, crucified, buried. And what became more confounding to them, that like they said now that some women, a set of them, went to the tomb and they didn't find the body. And why they had enough so visions of angels, or rather the way they put it, they said they saw visions of men, two men, who now said, ah, that the Christ is not there, he's risen. But Peter went there and found nothing too. What is happening? They were so sad. And in the course of that segment, a third person joined them and asked them, what is happening? Why are you moody? Why is this? And they started telling the same story. Now, that person said something to them. And you find that in Luke 24, verses 25 to 27. I want us to look at it also from the New King James Version. Luke 24, 25 to 27. I read. Then he... 
the person that joined them, and that is Christ, and they didn't know, said to them, oh foolish ones, oh foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in what? In all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter his glory? They had a hard heart. They had a darkened heart. He now went for that to say, or the Bible went for that to write, I'm beginning at Moses. When you hear beginning at Moses, beginning from the books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, beginning at Moses, and all the prophets, all the books of the prophets, he expanded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. The things concerning himself. So the scriptures are all about him. When Moses wrote these books and the prophet did their own and they were reading it, the gospel was being preached to them. Maybe they were not there when Christ had earlier said and told the Pharisees, I said, you cite the scripture, John 5, 39, because in need you think you derive the life. But everything about this little points at me, and I have come that you may have it, and I said I'm not. Maybe I need to exclude exclude uh, exclude and the wife that they were not there. But he has now come back and told them everything. So, my dear, if you are focusing on Christ from Genesis, now all the way, it's about him. And I want you to know that the scripture that you're referring here from Genesis to Malachi. And even when we read the, the, the New Testament, we're also talking about, when we hear scripture, it's also talking about from Genesis to Malachi. Because when you read it in the, in the New Testament, there's nothing like the, the New Testament. So everything there is all about Christ. So each time doctor has said that, look, the God they were talking about in the author is Christ. Please, it's true. In all dimensions. And if you read the scriptures also without focusing on Christ from that Genesis, you will miss it. You will end up dwelling in types and shadows that the Pharisees and all those will dwell in and never and miss the Christ. Now, let me tell you, these two fellows continue with this third man that they didn't know. But when they got to Emmaus, and that was their destination, and the third man wanted to go for that, they nudged him and said, ah, it's already late now, come and stay with us. Because they were somehow being pricked by the words, by the truth, by the revelations that came from the third person. But lo and behold, as they were there about to eat, this third man did what? Picked bread, gave thanks, and broke it. The Bible recorded that their eyes opened. Why did their eyes open? Because they had known this man physically. The way he prayed, the way he broke bread, the way. So that physical aspect, a pattern of his life came open, and then I realized that they had been with Christ. And the Bible recorded that he did what? He vanished. Now, what happened? In the same chapter, verse 44, the same Cleopas and wife or companion, because of what they experienced, they did not sleep in a mile. They had come back to Jerusalem and they now were with other disciples in the place they hold themselves up afraid. And lo and behold, verse 44, something happened. The same Christ came in a close place. Didn't pass through any door. Didn't pass through the window. What they saw was him standing. And he said to what? He said to them, Luke 4, verse 44. 
He said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses. The same law of Moses. What it means here are the books of Moses, not the Ten Commandments alone. From the law of Moses and prophets and the prophets and the saints concerning me. Did you get it? He said, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the books of Moses and the prophets and the sons concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. If you read the scripture without focusing that it is about Christ, you will not get it. But he said, when he now preached himself through the scriptures to them, their understanding came. If you the same fashion, the same thing that happened here happened in the book of John 20. And in that book of John, he said, it was then he breathed into them. He said, what? Receive the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, they became born again at this meeting. Before then, they were not born again. Nobody could have been born again without the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. This is a knowledge you must also have. They became born again. They had not the indwelling. But during the Pentecost, they received the infilling that gave the ability to do exploits. In the name of God. Now, please, wherever you are, I want you to pray this prayer. Pray and say, Father, open my eyes of understanding. Open my eyes of understanding. To comp comprehend. To comprehend that all scriptures pertain to your son Jesus Christ. All scriptures pertain to your son Jesus Christ. Open, say God, open my eyes. Let me get this very clearly. So that when I open the scripture, I will know, I will know, I will know that the tree of life is about your son. Believe in him. I will know that that ark is about your son. Believe in him. I will know that when they even form the ark and the mercy seat, the mercy seat is all about your son, Jesus. I will know. I want you to pray also this prayer. Pray and say, Father. Father. Open my eyes of understanding. Open my eyes of understanding. To comprehend again. To comprehend again. To all comprehend fully that the scriptures are all fully. about your son. That the scriptures are all about your son. Say, Father, bring me. Father, bring me in. To accept as Paul wrote. To accept as Paul wrote. In 2 Corinthians 1.20. In 2 Corinthians 1.20. That all the promises of God in him. That all the promises of God in him. Are yes. Uh, yes. And in him, amen. And in him, amen. To the glory of God. To the glory of us. God through us. Now, all the promises of God are in Christ. And the Bible says they are yes and amen. What? Through us. We are the one that will believe the promises. We are the one that will accept the promises. And we are the one that will see the realization of the promise. It will function through us. And that is by what? Concentrating and focusing on Christ. Who made the promises. This is true because Christ identified himself with us. With you and me as man. Even after resurrection. And how will you know this? <laughs> How will you know this? The same Luke 24, verse 39. Where is he with them? Look at what he did. And I'm going to quote it. He said, behold my hands and my feet. That is I, myself. Behold my hands and my feet. That is I, myself. I'm still man. 
Handle me and see. Handle me and see. For spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Please meditate on this. <laughs> If you are gone for that, you see that he asked them for fish, he asked them for meat, he asked them for food, and they gave him and he ate. One of the tricks of Satan, which he tried to play when Christ came, was to tell people that this person is only the Son of God. In other words, the Christ, message Christ wanted to pass to us, Satan was trying to derail it. Because if you see him only as son of God, then what he's trying to say, you can't do what he's doing. But Christ emphasized always son of man. He knew he was son of God, but he knew he was man. And he knew he brought a message that we also are like him. So what he means is that when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, he has stopped being the only begotten. He moved to be the first begotten, the first son, and we are the other sons. Have that at the back of your mind. Now, this thing I told you earlier, or the Bible I quoted earlier, even the same Hebrews 10, 12, confirmed it. He wrote, I said, but this man underlined it. Hebrew 10, 12. But this man underlined the man. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his fools too. Now, I want you to have this thing. I want this darkness to leave us. Christ is seated at the right hand of God, not only as God, but as man. With the kind of renewed body that you and I will get. And that is why he is still at the with us tomorrow. And by faith, we are seated there with him. Believe it, and it is the truth. So when John said, I'm just paraphrasing, first John 1.1, 1, 1, John now told us, said, that which you have had with your ears, we have had him. We have seen him with our eyes. We have looked at him. And we have touched him, the word of life. We saw him as man. We saw God as man. So when God say, when he said that ye are God, to whom the word of God has come, please, we are. Stop having that here, that book, what he is, you are not. Even the Bible recorded, what he is, we are here on earth. And that is why the deceit of the enemy is too much. The one of God said that God is the one that gives life to the dead. And I said, he is the, he's the one that made the physical things from the things that are not physical, the, the, the visible from the invisible. So what he means is that God is God both of the physical and of the spiritual. But most of us see God as only God of the spiritual, not of the physical. No. And because of this darkness, it has caused so many problems. If you read the Bible, because when you read the synoptic Gospels, what you are getting are what they call the eyewitness of account of Jesus. But when you move into the epistle, you start seeing what the spirit witness of what? The acts of Jesus. When he was on earth, they were carnal men. They were not born again. That was why he told them and said, look, there are certain things I will tell you, but you can't bear them. But after, they couldn't bear them then. But when the spirit now had come into them, they could bear it. That's why we now have some witnesses they wrote in the episode that there was no way it could have been in the synoptic gospels. All these Christ died that went to the dead and pray to them. Could you have had it when he was alive and moving on the head? No. So many accounts we read in the episode came because of the spirit witness, the Holy Spirit now in death. So now here we are. Please know that God is both the God of the physical and the spiritual. I tell you, when he came out from the mountain where he went to pray, 
and came out and saw that no boats remained and it was already dark. The last boat, the what? The apostle had taken it and were crossing over. What did he do? That was when he walked on water. The physical was not available. He provided the supernatural. When they had so many people they couldn't feed, and there wouldn't be money enough around there to feed them, but there were what? Five loaves and two fishes. He now went spiritual. God does not ignore the physical, as some of us think. He has made us so. And that is why when somebody now says, ignore the vaccine, dwell only the spiritual, God won't tell you that. He brought the wisdom for the vaccine. And you should do that. Know that you are live both in the spiritual and the physical. You are not going to be dead to the physical and dwell only in the spiritual. Neither you will not live all through in the physical with the children of men do and forget about the spiritual. We are balanced men in Christ. And you need to focus on him to know this. Now, I want to let you know that Christ is also depending on us to focus on him, his works, his works, and his promises to make his, enemy, to make his enemies his foot to before him. He returns. As he was here on earth, so are we now. We that believe, focus on Christ. The only difference between you and him here on earth is that the second redemption had not come. You have not shared this mortal body. When you share this mortal body, you will now know that you are him. But the Bible records that you will see him as he is. What it means is that you wouldn't even know the difference. That is why God the Father, God the Son, and even their spirit functioning together, and us will be together. And that is what we are calling and we are reasoning as the what? The heavenly wedding. It's all about all of us being one. Now, so if God spoke with them in time past through the prophets, he has in these last days spoken to us by his son, Jesus, by Christ, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Therefore, focus on Christ for answers to all situations and circumstances. Hold on to his word, hold on to his promises. My brethren, because that is the reality. I'm not telling you something that is, a, that is the reality. We are in him. He is in us. And we are all in the Father. In spite of the limitations of this body we are carrying now, we are him. Christ is us. Now, I want to put it to you. Are you despondent? Are you despairing? Are you depressed? Are you oppressed? He said to you, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It is a promise. That is him. Say, I will uphold you with my right of right hand. Isaiah 41.10. He came through the mouth of Isaiah, but he is the spirit of Christ from Genesis down to end. It's all about Christ. So people will stand now and they say, oh, well, forget about it. It's the Old Testament. It may be Old Testament to you because your eyes are still veiled. You are not seeing that Christ is, is all true. Now, do you want healing? First Peter 1 24, and several places in the Bible, but that's the one that I said, by whose stripes we were healed. He said, I said my word, and they're, 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 they're healed. Focus on Christ and his promises. A friend there, uh, there's a man that manages his properties. He shared with me a testimony that, is, that, 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 that can aid us in this healing aspect. 
He traveled to the US with his wife, only to get there. The operation the wife had here in Nigeria, I think it has something to do with, uh, to do with goiter. Developed problem. And there was an emergency and they took her into the hospital for another surgery. So while this one was going on, the man received a message that out of his four children, in fact, the one that was not affected does not stay here. He's still a student in Canada. The ones here at home, even some working, had all contacted the coronavirus. Their husband went somewhere, I think Abu Dolphin also, a wedding of a cousin or sister, and brought this thing down. They were all down, including the household. So the man had to leave the wife with their host to take care while she was still in the hospital and rush down. He said, but he had an unusual feeling. He was not even bothered about the hospital bill abroad in America. You know, when somebody, you know, undergoes surgery, what they charge, according to some people. But when he rushed down here, So, sorry. Are you hearing me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, I was being interrupted by a call. No problem. So he now organized a meeting, a kind of retreat for all of them. And in that retreat, as they were doing whatever, in spite of the other things they were taking, they didn't go anywhere. Take turmeric, take this, take that, they were taking. God started healing all of them. I healed them. But the amazing aspect of this testimony, and I said, the hospital bill in America, what happened was that the wife, when she got herself, now came to know the doctor that did the operation. I learned behold a Nigerian. But when I looked at the doctor, I said, I know you. The doctor said, how can you know me? Oh, I know your parents. The doctor now said, who are my parents? She mentioned their names. The doctor said, they are my parents. How did you know them? Say, so we worship together at All Souls, Lethe, Anglican Church. Hi. The doctor said, I love my parents. Because you know them. I'm not taking one dime for this surgery. Now, the other people who had one hand or the other in the surgery also now said, because you have said this and you know this our doctor, we are discounting the whole thing by 80%. We made 20%. I hope this man will stop disturbing me. Are you hearing me again? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. The host now said, this is comfortable for me. I will pay for you. You see how God focusing on Christ with his children produce unusual miracles. Everything about us is about Christ. Are you passing pray through prayerlessness? Some people say they don't pray. They can't pray. He will let it in you to do to his good pleasure. Ask for the spirit of prayers and supplications. Focus on Christ. Is your marriage turbulent? Are there things you are seeing you are not, you shouldn't see? Just look unto Christ and ask him to teach you where you are going wrong with his word in Genesis 2.24. The word that said, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh. It is a deep mystery about marriage. Where has you done something that the cleaving is no more cleaving? Say, go to him with that word. It is not about you, it's about him to direct you and help you. You don't come there now taking a position, no. The problem may be you, and you have to accept it as it has been me, also in my own marriage, and I'm accepting it now. You 
go to him. You don't become like the Adam that didn't attend the image of Christ. He didn't because he disobeyed God. Why did you do it? Is it not Eve? The wife you gave me. Eve, why did you do it? Is it not the serpent? The serpent, why did you do it? He came calm. He came calm. Serpent didn't say anything. Why did it? Why didn't he say anything? He has achieved what he wants. Authority to dwell in the heart of men to call darkness, to bring death into their lives, have been given to him. That was what he wanted. And that was all that Christ did to die here for you and me, to remove that authority and power of causing darkness in the heart of men that whosoever believes now, light comes into him. The problem is it your, your children. Psalm 127, three makes us to say, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Now, the problem is that, uh, is there any time you took away this heritage from God? We do it many a time. Are you training them in the way that God didn't approve of? At a point now, they start doing things, manifesting things you never expected. It is not too late. Return back to God. Return back to that author and finisher. That one that is the faith, that is Christ. And say, look at this, you said, look at that. Where did I go wrong? These are your children, take them back. Are you passing two difficult tasks? You have a difficult task or two difficult circumstances. This morning, God is also asking you to ask me to tell you, tap into the promise of angels as ministering spirits. Angels are ministering spirits that who Christ made possible to look at us, to look at man. They will, help you, they will help you in difficult tasks. They help us in difficult situations and circumstances. They are there. Hebrew 1 14 said it. Psalm 91 11 to 12 said it. He said they will not allow you to hit your, your, your feet on a stone. The stones are challenging problems and difficult things. Because of this body, we have their limitations. But the angels are there to minister to us. You tap into it. Christ has given them that command. It happened to me. What could have saved me and my three children November 3rd, 2013? The jeep had lost control, total control. And we were flying across a bridge, a bridge that the railings were even bad. The side railings were bad. When we saw ourselves plunging into this river, I prayed a prayer I know that it was the Holy Spirit that planted it. I just said, Jesus, you must save your children. Jesus, you must save your children. I never thought of that prayer. He just came and I said it. My children were seeing their deaths. Three of them. Favor. Hallelujah. Don't you, we were all seeing our death. All of a sudden, this gym that was plunging to the river was lifted up and turned 360 degrees, bounced on the road. I believe angels came and did that work. As I was even preparing this aspect, Acts 27, 23 came. It was Paul. In the midst of total darkness, the ship was tossing up and down, lost control. In broad daylight, there was total darkness. Nobody could see each other. And everybody had lost hope on their way to Rome. He started fasting. He started praying, focusing on Christ. And lo and behold, look at what happened. Acts 27, 23. And I said, for there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong, saying, do not be afraid, Paul. But immediately I wrote, do not be afraid, Paul. And I had a voice that said, do not be afraid, Israel, Polite. I don't know the difficult task you are in and you are afraid. For each one of us here, no matter what we are in, focus on Christ. Is it fear? Let me tell you, I lost one academic year in the university because I took in. Because the doctors were not diagnosing things properly. I became so much afraid. 
I couldn't concentrate in my lectures. I started missing lectures, going to hospitals. Before I know it, Satan had put the fear that there's no way you can pass your courses again. Somebody who did excellently well in first year, are you part of Nigeria where you have up to two, two, two on the two one grade? You know what it means then? All of a sudden, I became so afraid that I wouldn't even be allowed to take exam. The fear took over me. I go to the hospital, they can't diagnose what was happening to me. I had doctors confer, I thought I had cancer. Now I wake up in the morning shivering. If I had known what I know now, and I want to tell you that I have passed through worse situations now, and I never became afraid. Why? Because God says in Psalm 34, 4, he says, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord, David was saying, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears, underline it, all my fears. Demand peace because Christ is the Prince of Peace. Fear is all about turning, overturning your peace. Christ is the Prince of Peace. Demand peace. Chase away every fear by concentrating on Christ and his word. Now, are you have a besetting sin here? Yeah? The problem is that this thing is still happening in spite of my many years in healing wings. Look, you are the same as me, my brother. I had masturbation for 15 years, I couldn't stop it. But John 14, 4 says what? Who can bring a clean, meaning pure, thing out of an unclean, meaning impure thing? Job himself said nobody, but he was talking out of ignorance. He doesn't have the knowledge you and I have now. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? It is Christ. Tell him and present that sin, that besetting sin. That in spite of your being in healing with for years, you are still doing it. You love hanging out, hanging out to gossip, hanging out to talk of things that are rubbish. Hang out with your wives, hang out with your children. It has eaten you did that your wife is complaining. Are you in hardship? In Nigeria now many people are in hardship because we are in the world, but not of the world. Things of the world are still somehow affecting us. People in the world are complaining because of hardship. Somehow it's rubbing up on, on some of us. Their own hardship will lead them to perdition. Why? Because they will start doing wrong things to cure the hardship. But when it comes to us, we have a word, Job 23, 10. He says what? But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. That is for you. Every hardship you are passing through now is a testing that at the end you are going to come forth as gold. That is the word of God. Focus on Christ. You have a ministry and you don't want to go into that ministry because you are taking there is a problem here. Yeah? There's a problem here. Yeah? I don't have this. I don't have that. That is darkness. That is challenge. There are difficulties. But let me tell you what God so says about you, about that ministry. Isaiah 6, 60 verse 2. Isaiah 60 verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. Get into that thing he wants you to do in spite of challenges. And at that point, the glory of God will arise. My brother, it is not all negative. Some of us here, they are not complaining. They don't even have any of these issues. Rather, God has blessed them with wealth and riches. But let me tell you what you will pray. And that's the word I have for you. Father, let the wealth and riches you are giving me be used for good works, willing to share and turn it into a heavenly treasure that I may lay, lay hold to Christ forever. Ask God that whatever you have, that you should use it unto his glory so that it becomes a treasure for you in heaven and you will not miss eternal life. It's a prayer for somebody here. It's all well for you. You can go and read First Timothy 6, 17 to 18. First Timothy 6, 17 to 18. This is also the word of God for us who are comfortable. But lastly, let's talk about debt. As I was preparing this thing, God told me that there's somebody here, or you know the person who confided in you. You know the person who confided in you. 
that person is afraid of death. I'm talking about death now. That person is afraid of death because somehow she thinks that when she gets married, that she's going to die during childbirth. She's not yet married, the person I'm talking about. But for her, and for any one of us here who has a fear of death, let me tell you what Revelation 5.10 says. Revelation 5.10. It says, Christ has made us kings and priests, has made you and me kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. We are reigning here with Christ. The word of God says that the earth, the heaven we are seeing, will roll away. It will totally roll away. He said the earth we are seeing will melt with fervent heat. Now, what remains after all these things? What will remain is only Christ. What will remain is only God and us in him. And then there'll be a new Jerusalem and a new earth that will descend. And that time we'll be married with him and we shall all fuse and will reign your earth. So death has no power. He who is in Christ lives forever. Believe it, all of us who are sharing death and I want to thank God for his words and promises. My brethren, when we remove our gaze, or I look away from Christ as God. I remove our look from his works as God's work or as God's spirit. What we have done is to make a foundation that is fragile. And we locate ourselves in a spider's way. So my brothers and sisters, let's look unto Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. And that faith his name is Jesus. Look at Jesus. Thank you, and God bless you. I am done, doctor. Praise the Lord. Done, yeah, yeah, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. Uh, this time will be. Huh. You are a son of God. You know, uh, you, you, the, the, the messages that you preach are messages, forgive me for saying this, there are messages that I, I cannot preach. There, there that's is, a, that, that I was, sir. There are messages that I can't preach. I mean, there are some messages that they just don't come to me. And those are the messages that you preach. Huh? There is, there is a difference between preaching and teaching. What you gave us today is foundational teaching. Bless God, sir. Really, really, we need, we need a lot more of it in killing wings. Some of the things that you said, let me, let me, let me emphasize one of them. I mean, you know, the, the Bible says when he met the people in Cleopas, he opened the scriptures to them to show them from Moses onto Malachi the things that were written about him. It took me 20 years to understand that because I couldn't, I didn't get what is it that was written about him. And it was only when I understood that everything from Genesis to Malachi was written about Christ. And I realized that he called me as a prophet. I didn't know. But I realized that, yes, the same person who talked to Isaiah was the same person who called me. And so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I want to just to thank you and to bless you for your son. I want to thank you because he has shown us that the teaching that is important, the teaching that is central and fundamental, Father, comes from you. Because when you sat down with those people at Emmaus, you started to open the scriptures to them. 
you started to shed your light on them. Father, I want to thank you for the light that your son has brought from you to Healing Wings this morning. I ask, Father, Lord, God Almighty, that that light will never go dim in the name of Jesus. Amen. That more and more, you will reveal more and more things to him to bring and share with us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. But even as you did it today, you prepared a table before us, so will you continue to do with the healing wings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Also, God, I ask that you continually give us ears that can hear you. Because, Lord, if we can hear you, if we can see you, we have all that we need. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Please, the tradition in Healing Wings, I mean, we don't do it as much uh, uh, since we went virtual, is that contributions and questions come after a preaching or a teaching such as this. So if you have a question, if you have a contribution, please, can I see your hand up? Let us take them. Anybody with a contribution? Anybody with an exhortation, anybody with something that arises from what we have had this morning. Can I see your hand up? Okay, nobody. Thank God for that. If you have a prayer request, again, in relation to what we have heard. Okay, uh, hold on. Uh, Karen has a hand up. Yes, Karen. Open your mic. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, I'd like to, to thank uh, God for... Louder, this. louder, please. I would like to thank God. I would like to um, thank God for letting... Um, uh, leading Mr. Ob to give this service. Um, I'm I'm in the process of sending out manuscripts and so on. But in the meantime, I wanted to be engaged in some creative writing, even whilst I did this. And louder, louder, was... please, louder, please. Speak to your. Can opinion. you hear me? I'm yes, talking if you, as if, loud if you, as if you I talk can. at this level, we can hear you, Karen. If I say we can't hear you, it's because we can't. That's why he's putting yeah. his ear. Hmm? Speak up. You can speak up. Speak to your to your laptop. That's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm hearing you clearly. Please go ahead. Right. Um, I'm in the process of sending out manuscripts, and. Whilst I'm doing that, I wanted to be engaged in creative writing. And the Holy Spirit um, impressed on me that I should begin working again on a long poem called Night Clubbed, which I have not thought out uh, particularly, but he has been giving me ideas all week, last week, this week, and the ideas very curiously um, is the confirmation that he has, in fact, asked me to engage in this project, particularly the move Christ, focusing on Christ very roughly. The protagonist sees the world as a nightclub, a club in which people are engaged in evil and they are pounding her head with clubs and so on and so forth, a lot of violence. And she goes online and she wants to discover a man. She wants to marry a man. But that's, those are all the intricacies of it. But the main thing that I got from, from, your, from uh, your, your sermon was that we are on a journey from darkness to light. And at the same time, we are on a journey in which we are becoming um, we, we are, our, our ignorance, our darkness is being excised so that we can be illuminated into God's way and become a light like him, if you see what I'm, I'm getting at. And that mm -hmm. having realized this, this, uh, this, this light, we are then in a position to marry him. 
Do I do you understand where I'm coming from? I'm, I'm, I'm getting you. So I'm very grateful for this uh, this sermon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Any prayer requests? Okay, any testimonies? You have a testimony you want to share to the glory of God, Pastors or Rosemary? I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. And I have a testimony that I want to share. I know it's a bit long. Um, the beginning of September, uh, I have so many things that I was, I was believing God for. I have so many things I was believing God for. I have a um, couple of school fees to pay. Uh, I have three brothers, uh, one sister, and then I have my two children, and then I have um, some adopted children that I have, like two children. All of them are in, uh, in higher institution. So, and uh, when I look at the school fees, it was almost uh, 1.6, 1.7 for this year and it was much so i don't want to think about it in short i didn't want to even write it down i was saying god i don't want to write it down and then i have a rent also that i'm supposed to pay uh also at the end at the uh, end of august so everything is in this september so i was just believing god that god would do something uh different and so um uh, one money, my uh, I saw money from my landlord. He, he sent me two million naira, and I called him. He said uh, he sent the two million naira because he's planning to see how he can travel next year. I said, ah. <laughs> so I said, God, I thank you. These two million naira will set to the school fees. Uh, yes, I know it's borrowed, but it will set to the school fees. So, but you know, God, most of the time we think differently and God think some, God is doing something differently somewhere. And I just want to thank God because the same money that I was thinking that I'm going to borrow, God then make provision in a different way, which by this school fees, they pay it. I, I, the first one was um, someone that had, hasn't talked for, in for like three or four years. They called me and uh, give me one source of business that I did. And then at the end of the business, I have like 600,000, which I use to set to the school fees. And then uh, something also happened again and got set to the remaining one. So the money that my landlord sent to me that I was thinking that I'm going to borrow to pay the school fees, I didn't borrow from the money, but make a different way where the school fees were settled. And I want to thank God for that. And then the rent, uh, in short, I don't want to talk about the rent because when he, when he, he saw me, he said, I hope you are not, uh, my landlord, I hope you are not thinking about uh, your rent has expired. We are all one family. Just, just know that we are all one family. We share about them. Just be doing what you are doing. Forget about the other side for uh, rent. So I just want to thank God because yes, uh, it's tough. The COVID-19 has come, the travel has been slow. Everything has become so slow, but in all this, God is still making ways for his children. And I just want to thank God. Because every single year, he must make a way for school fees. It's just because I don't know whether we forgot when this thing becomes so worried. <laughs> I know God is taking us to that aspect whereby we won't be bothered again. We just believe that he will always come for the rescue. Even though he didn't come for the rescue, he'll make a way a different aspect. I just want to thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Is it Sam or is it Christine? Which one? It's Christine. Good morning, sir. Good morning, church. Morning. Um, I, I just want to thank God for delivering us from a fire incident here at home. 
So on Friday, I I was rushing off with the kids to take them to school. And uh, because just as day children were waiting, the morning they be running around doing all sorts of things. When the driver arrived, the ride arrived for the morning. I I forgot that I had put something put on the fire. You know, just to heat it up, I completely forgot. So in my rush to make to ensure that they all get into the vehicle and we leave, I left the food on the fire. Uh, I really want to thank God that Sam was still around at that morning because he came downstairs and said there was just so much smoke in the kitchen. The expeller was not on. All the louvers were closed. The fan was not nothing. As in, it was just airtight in there, and he was able to turn up the the burner and stuff and all. I really want to just thank God, honestly. And then um, secondly, I want to thank God for one of my elder brothers, Stephen. He sent me a message some, sometime last week, I think on Thursday or so, uh, telling me that, uh, that they just experienced an earthquake. He's based in Australia. Now, just some days ago, some and I were checking out and we realized that the earthquake actually happened 120, uh, 128 kilometers away from Melbourne, where he is. But from what my brother described when we spoke on the phone, he said their house was shaking. It was like the house was going to collapse on them. And the thought of, should we go outside? If we go outside, we don't know if the ground will open and swallow us up. So I just want to thank God that he preserved the life of himself and his family. And um, we are just, it's something we are just talking about now and not that we lost any lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is Sam there? He, yes, he is. Yes, I am. Sam, who Sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Please pray for us. Let, help us to close this meeting. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the message which you have given to your children. We thank you for the comfort with which you have comforted us. We thank you for the knowledge with which you have, <clears throat> you have blessed us. And we thank you for the understanding that you will grant for us to be able to understand every single thing that you have said, that we do not miss anything. Blessed be your name, Almighty Father. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the, for the miraculous uh, 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 happenings that you have taken your children through for which they are testifying and we say lord may your name be exalted forever and ever amen god almighty we thank you for the opportunity to still be able to be in fellowship like this despite all the things happening around us and we say lord we trust you to continue to sustain each and every one of your children to continue oh lord to guide and direct us that Amen. everything we think, say, or do shall be, O oh Lord, led by your spirit. Amen. And not anything that we fathom out of our own minds ourselves. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we commit our going out and our coming in this coming week into your hands. And we say, Lord, you will grant us your protection as usual, your provision as usual. Amen. You will grant us your angels, O oh Lord, to guide us and guard us in every step of the way. And they will, they will bear us in their arms that we do not dash our feet against a stone in the name Amen. of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. We receive with thanksgiving every opportunity that you are bringing before us this week. We receive with thanksgiving every, every blessing that you have made available to us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the opportunity to be a blessing to others. And we say, Lord God Almighty, enrich our lives to enrich others in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord God Almighty, cause us, O oh Lord, to show forth your glory everywhere we go, in everything that we do, that others might be blessed with the knowledge of Jesus and with the salvation of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name, Almighty Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Say to the righteous, it is well with you and your loved ones in Jesus' name. Well.
Be well with you all of you. Be well with everyone. Be well with you. Have a blessed day. Be well with everyone. Be well with you. God bless everyone. Be well with you. Mr. B is well with you. Amen. It is well with you. Stop by yourself. It is well with you. It is well with you, Chad. I guess it's fine. It's well with everybody. Sound. Hold on. It's well with you. Hold yeah, on. Yes. I live in Kings. Well with you. Mr. David is well with you. Mr. David is well with you. Mr. David is well with you.